Hello and welcome to All-in-One SEO. In this video, I will walk you through how to set up All-in-One SEO for WordPress correctly. All-in-One SEO is the best WordPress SEO plugin that allows you to easily optimize your WordPress website for search engines and social media platforms. If you have not done so already, please hit the subscribe button and notification bell. Let's get started. So the first thing you want to do is come over to your WordPress dashboard and we need to install the plugin for all-in-one SEO. Now you can use the free version if you like by going to plugins and add new and then just searching for all-in-one SEO in the plugin directory. In this video, I'm going to be showing more of the pro features. So I'm going to be using the pro license of all-in-one SEO. I'm going to leave a link in the description if you're interested. And when you visit the website, we're just going to click on get all-in-one SEO. If you like, you can browse the features and the website to get a better idea of what it can offer for you. After you have an account, we're going to go ahead and log in. On the left-hand side, enter your email address and password that you used to create an account. And in the dashboard here, let's go ahead and click on downloads. On the right-hand side, you'll see a green download button. Let's go ahead and click this to download the pro plugin. And on the bottom left, you're going to click the little icon here to copy the license key. We can close this window now and we can come over to plugins and add new and we can upload plugin and we can drag this zip file right here on the choose file button or you can click choose file and select the zip file on your hard drive. If you have the free version already installed, this is going to activate it, but there will be no data loss. So if you've already installed and used all in one SEO, the pro version is going to keep everything intact for you. Let's go ahead and install now and activate plugin. Now, after we have the plugin installed, it's going to run a setup wizard here. Now you don't have to use this if you don't want to. I'm gonna go through it quickly here. So let's get started. It's gonna ask you for the best category that describes your site. So for this example, I'm going to be using a blog, but whichever one of these makes sense for your website. The home page title. Now these are dynamic tags that will change how your title in the browser is displayed. And this title will also be shown in Google results. So for your home page, it's going to show your site title a separator and a tagline. Now this separator, if you're wondering, can be changed in the settings. So if you want to pick a different type of separator, you can do so in the settings for all in one. We have the meta description as well. So you can change what is shown in here and you can view all tags if you want to add something different. We're going to save and continue. On step two, it's going to ask for additional site information. So is this for a person? So you can see that the information has changed here or organization. So the organization name, the phone number, the contact type. So if I put in a phone number here, we can change what the contact is for. So we'll say that this is a customer support number. You can upload your logo if you like. So I have one here uploaded in the media library already. I'm going to choose this image and you can see that that was added. We have the default social share image. So if a blog post is shared on social media, usually there is a featured image on that page. And if there isn't one, we can set a default social share image to show up on social media just in case. Below we have your social profile so you can add these in. And this is going to ask for your URL, not just your account name. If all of your social media accounts are named the same, you can click the button here and you can pick which social media accounts you want and then the name of that. So for this example, I just put in all in one SEO and you can pick which ones you want to add or remove. If we scroll down, we can save and continue. Here it's going to ask which SEO features do you want to enable? So we have sitemaps and optimized search appearance by default. And the sitemaps are a list of all your content that Google or other search engines use to crawl. And optimized search appearance are just the tools that make your website show up in Google search properly. Down here we have analytics checked. You can uncheck this if you like. And this is going to install Monster Insights. Monster Insights is a fantastic WordPress analytics plugin. It has a ton of great features and I highly recommend that you check it out over at monsterinsights.com. We also have a pro version automatically clicked here. We recommend this if you're running the pro version. And this is to control the title and alt attributes for attachment pages and images that are embedded in your content. We also have local SEO, video sitemap, news sitemap, smart redirects, and 404 detection. And there's a little bit of a description under each one if those apply to you or not. Let's go ahead and save and continue. Here it's going to ask about the search appearance. This is how your the Google snippet preview is going to look like so we can see the title name and the description here. So if you want to edit that, it'll take you back to the homepage title and the meta description options where you can set these tags again. Down here it's going to ask is the site under construction or live? So you can decide if it is ready to be listed or indexed or not and to include all post types or not. So if you uncheck this, you can pick which pages or posts or attachments to include to be indexed or not. Enable sitemap is going to be checked and do you have multiple authors? I'm going to say yes and redirect attachment pages. I'm going to say yes to this as well. WordPress by default 
default will create a page, an attachment page for each image or attachment that you create. And these are considered low text pages and it is highly recommend to redirect them because it will improve your overall SEO score. Let's go ahead and save and continue. Step five of five is to enter your license key. So hopefully you still have that handy. I'm just going to paste this right in here and click connect. And finally, we have a congratulations screen and you can check out the links to join our community on Facebook follow on Twitter. We have a step-by-step -step guide to improve your SEO rankings, as well as a guided tour of all-in-one SEO. I'm going to click finish setup and go to dashboard. And here it's going to redirect you to the dashboard. You can see a welcome message. You can launch the setup wizard again, read the setup guide. So there's a quick little video here. If we come down, there's an SEO site score that you can see. And if you are running this on a local website, say a development website, this will not show up for you. So this has to be a live website for it to work. There's no notifications here at this time. And we have some support links here to check out and some more quick links here. Next, let's discuss optimizing your website pages and blog posts for SEO using all in one SEO. So I'm going to go over to posts and all posts, and I'm going to edit this post here. I added a sample post for us to work with. Now this sample post is called SEO best practices, 20 ultimate SEO tips to boost rankings. And I just want to mention quick that this is a real blog post. If you head over to all one seocom slash blog, this is a great place to keep up to date on new features and new tutorials. So feel free to check that out. So this is a very long post. I'm just going to head down to the very bottom here. And here we'll see some all-in-one SEO settings. So we have the general tab and we can see this snippet preview again. And now you can see this might look a little bit different now that it's filled with some real information. So we have a title here and then we have our site name along with the meta description below that. And then we have the mobile version here, so you can switch between to see how that looks. So for the post title, you can change any of these variables if you like. If you don't want the site title on this, we could delete that and remove it. And you can see that that is removed here in the example. If I come down, we have the meta description and it's showing the post excerpt. If you wish, you could remove this. And for each post, you could just manually enter in it for each article, which would allow you to get creative and write catchy descriptions for your articles. Down below, we have the focus key phrase. And a focus keyword is the main keyword that you want to target for in Google or search engines. This is usually the phrase that your users are most likely to search for. So for this example, I'm just going to paste in SEO tips to boost rankings. So this would be a focus key phrase that we're looking to target. You can also add additional key phrases here as well. Now, just adding this won't improve your SEO rankings, but it will help the analyzer in all-in-one SEO decide if you need to optimize for this key phrase better or not. So down here under page analysis, it'll give you different errors to improve upon. So the meta description length is too long in my example. The content length is fine. Internal links, couldn't find any internal links to your content and external links. Under the title, we have the SEO title length is too long and the readability as well. We have some issues here that we could work on and fix. Next, let's go under the social tab here and this will show you a preview of what your blog post will look on Facebook or Twitter and all of the options below that will change based on that social media network so down below we have the Facebook title we have the Facebook description the image source so we can change this to a featured image attached image first image etc we have a video URL the object type so we have different options here and we're going to discuss schema a little bit more in depth here in a bit so i'm just going to skip over the details about this at the moment we have an article section and an article tag so the next tab here we have the schema and the schema type so for this example it is an article but i could change this and pick something else so for example if this was a recipe i could click here and here's where you could enter the name your description the author an image so if it's a recipe maybe an image of the food the type of dish, so if this is breakfast or dessert, snack, what cuisine type it is, so French, Mediterranean, or American, the time required for prep and cooking, the amount of servings, calories, ingredients. So this is all great schema information that Google can use. So for example, if I search for homemade cookies, you can see some of the information that is listed here, such as the cook time and some of the ingredients. And this is all taken from schema information that you enter into proper SEO format. So this is a great way to add that extra information and get listed and Google will reward you for that. And lastly, we have the advanced tab here. We have the robot settings. So we're going to use the default settings. If you uncheck 
this, you can modify those to be no index or no follow or whatever specific case you may need here. I'm going to use the default settings. And here we have the canonical URL. And this is a special tag which tells search engines that even though this content appears elsewhere on your site, its permanent location is this particular URL. This helps avoid duplicate content issues. There's also a priority score here, such as how important is this content and the frequency that it is updated. If you're not sure what to change these to, just use the default options for now. Now that we have a good grasp of the all-in-one SEO settings, here we can click on the all-in-one SEO button. And here it'll show us a snippet preview. So we can edit this snippet yet again. This is another place that we can do so. We have the focus keyword, additional keywords, the basic SEO. It says there's a couple errors. So this is a lot of the information that we saw earlier at the bottom of the page and the readability. So these are things that you could work on to improve your score. I also just want to mention as well, if you're using WooCommerce for an e-commerce store, All-in-One SEO for WordPress is ready for e-commerce and helps you optimize your WooCommerce SEO right out of the box. So this is a great way to optimize your product pages. And All-in-One SEO is a great option for that. So now after you've made your changes, I'm just going to click on update. And let's head back to the WordPress dashboard. On the left-hand side here, let's go down to sitemaps under All-in-One SEO. And an XML sitemap is a file that lists all your website's content in an XML format. So search engines like Google can easily discover and index your content. These are extremely important for SEO. And All-in-One SEO automatically sets them up for you. You can find your XML sitemap by adding sitemap.xml to the end of your website URL. And here we can see a breakdown of four different XML files. So for example, here's the post sitemap. And you can see a link to the example post that I have on this website. It counts how many images, the priority, the change frequency, and when the last change was. Under the sitemap section here, you can actually preview that same URL by clicking on open sitemap and that'll open right here for you. So if we come down, we want to enable sitemap and we have sitemap settings. So if you're not sure what to set, I would recommend just leaving these by the default settings, but this will allow you to manage your sitemap indexes, include or exclude post types, taxonomies, such as your categories and tags. You can also enable XML sitemaps for date based archives and author archives as well. All in one also allows you to add additional pages that might not be automatically picked up by WordPress. So if you click here, you can add a page page URL. One example, maybe if you're using a page builder to create your own standalone landing pages, or maybe a Shopify store page that you want to have indexed here, you can paste that URL in here, add the priority frequency and last modify. After you've made your changes, you can click save changes. And at the top, we have a tab here for video sitemap. Now this works much in the same way as the XML sitemap module, but this will generate XML sitemap specifically for the video content on your website. And this will help search engines such as Google display rich snippet information information in search results, kind of like the recipes that I've shown you earlier, but in video format. So let's go ahead and activate video sitemap. And now if we come under how to make apple pie in the video results, we can see a little thumbnail with a player here for a video and creating the video sitemap will allow Google to recognize that easier and display it better in their search results. So make sure that you have the sitemap enabled for videos if you have video content. And again, you can click here to preview that XML file. At the bottom, we have different settings to enable sitemap indexes, how many links per sitemap, which post types to include, which taxonomies, which are just the categories and tags, and then some advanced settings down here that you can select. Once you're done, you can save your changes. Similar to the video, we also have new sitemap and we can activate the news sitemap. So this will only contain articles that were published in the last 48 hours, and it gives you control over which content you submit to Google News. So again, you can enable this sitemap specifically for news. You can preview that. The publication name, the post types to include, and advanced settings. So again, very similar to the video sitemap. And the last tab here is RSS sitemap. Search engines will generally visit your RSS more often than your XML because it's updated more often with fresher content. You can enable this sitemap here, preview it, and the number of posts to show, so your last 50 or your last 10 or whatever you want to set that to, and the post types to include. And don't forget to save your changes when you're done. Next, let's talk about Google Search Console and other webmaster tools and how to add that into All-in-One SEO. If you come back over to your general settings, we we have a tab here called Webmaster Tools, so we can click here. And these will allow you to enter your verification codes to activate the Webmaster Tools. So if you're using Google or Bing or one of the others, you can click here 
and add your verification code. If you're not sure how to get your Google verification code, we have documentation that you can read and this will show you how to verify your site with Google Search Console. If you're not sure what Google Search Console is, it's a free tool offered by Google to help website owners monitor their website's presence in Google search results so you can track where certain blog posts are listed for certain terms. Next, let's click on the local SEO and let's activate local SEO. This is if you run a local small business and you're serving a specific product or service in a specific town or region. This includes businesses like restaurants, real estate agents, plumbing, small stores, etc. So if you are running a local small business, this is a very important section to get right and make sure that you fill out. So for instance, if someone is looking for an Italian restaurant, Google will know to show local results near where that person is. So if they're searching on their phone and you have a local Italian restaurant near them, you should or will appear in the local SEO results as long as your information is filled in properly. So you can just simply answer the questions here, multiple locations, yes or no. And we have the display location information. So if you want to show your business information in your pages or your posts, all in one SEO has a widget that you can use, a short code that you can use, a Gutenberg block, or even PHP code. So for example, if you want to show your business information or your hours, you can just use this Gutenberg block and that'll import that right into your post or page. But first you want to make sure that you have all of your information filled out. So on the bottom here, you have your business information, such as your name, the address, contact info, payment info, etc. We have a second tab here called opening hours. So make sure that you fill these out. And here's the display information. The same thing as the business information. We have an opening hours widget, short code, Gutenberg block or PHP code that you can import into your poster page. So down here, you can put your labels, your settings and the hours for your business. And don't forget to save your changes. All right, now that you have a lot of your settings already in place, this would be a good time to do a little bit of SEO analysis. So on the left hand side, we can click here and this will load the built in all in one SEO analyzer for your SEO score. So for my example, your overall site score is 78, which is considered excellent. Now, even though this is an excellent score, I still have some improvements that I could make. And all in one SEO gives you a complete SEO checklist here of things such as critical issues that I would definitely want to make sure are taken care of. And something cool that you can check out is to analyze a competitor site. So if you have a competitor, you can put in the URL here and do a little analysis on them as well. Next, let's look at tools. And we have a robots.txt editor, HD access editor, import export database tools and system status. If you're not sure what you're doing with any of these, I recommend that you just leave them alone or read about them more in depth in our documentation. If you come under the import slash export tab here, all in one SEO allows you to easily import SEO data from third party plugins so that you can switch and use a more powerful and much better SEO tool. And this is all very easy to do. And lastly, let's go under general settings and let's just take a quick look at access control. So if you have multiple people working on your website and you don't want specific people such as editors or authors having access to the settings and controls of all in one SEO, you can manage the roles here for that. So we can use the default settings, but if I turn this off, I can fine tune which options I want. So the editor can change the general settings or the search appearance if I don't want that to happen, I could just uncheck these and then click save changes. Now that you know how to set up all in one SEO for WordPress correctly, it would be a great time to check out the pro version if you have not done so yet. If you decide to get the pro license, check out this video on installing all in one SEO pro and activating a license key. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.